Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Today we're going to work on this one here. This is called the Crochet Ruana and this is the Crochet Poncho. Now the reason why I show you this is that we look like it's the same pattern. We've done this before. We have a tutorial available on this one here and it's a really nice design. So there's a difference uh, fundamentally uh, on how it's done. There's a difference in material and you know either one is really quite awesome. This one here that I'm about to show you today is much easier than the one that I have over here. Let me tell you the difference. So the major difference between the two is that this one here is working in, in rows going back and forth in solid color. So if you follow the gray it'll go up all the way and then there's white that eventually comes in. It's separated by one row of black as you see here. This is using the alpaca blend. This one here is still working across but what happens is that you can see that it looks like squares. So this is like graphgan work. This is when you carry up a yarn. So you, you do one yarn here and then you drop it, pick up the next one, drop it, pick up the next one and do that. So this one here is more of a visual uh, interest that kind of reminds me a lot of this one but because this is working up in rows and not changing color midway across it's much easier than this one. But both are a very different look so it all depends what you're looking for as well. Again there's a tutorial available for this. So let's uh, focus back on in this project here and let me tell you a little bit more about it. So the Crochet Rowana is actually a really simplistic design and when you really look at it let's just draw it here. So we're gonna have a flat edge going up like so and then eventually at some point we stop and we continue the edge and going up and over like this. And then we come back and then we pick up again and do the other side and it just drapes over the body. So the first one is just drop uh, coming up over her shoulder and straight down. This one's coming up over her shoulder and she's got it tossed over her other shoulder. And then back and behind if she was to turn around you would see that it was a back flat just like you see in this little diagram. So I have done a little sample for you just to show you what it looks like and then I'm gonna tell you about the sequence of, of counts and then we're gonna continue from that point. So here's what it looks like as a sample. So I did the whole thing in the width so that I could actually figure out uh, all the information and I can show you how it goes up over her shoulder and down the front body. So you're going to notice that we're gonna start off here and it's like a slate color and there is a border that is surrounding this whole thing. So when we go to do it the first time you will not see the border as we do it. So we're gonna continue up in the pattern and right where you see this purple one right here that is actually the black in the model and now from this purple one right up to the end of the slate here the, of the gray this is the repeat pattern and you have to repeat this a total of three times. So you repeat all this distance and then what happens is that once you do it three times then you're going to repeat this row one more time which you see here and then the next row one more time and then it divides off over top of the body. So as you look at this model you're gonna notice that this pattern exists three different repeats before it gets to the back of her head and then we're gonna then continue to go down over the top. So this is a, like a two line repeat pattern which is really quite easy and it's all about the counts and I'm gonna show you that information right now. So we're about to start with this pattern and what's gonna happen is that you're going to get started here in the slate color right in the very beginning and then you're going to have the first dotted line that comes across and that's the, the onyx or the black color that you see within the model. So from this all the way to where I showed you before to the to where the gray stops here this is the repeat pattern. So when you see this purple one again uh, in the gray it means that it is the repeat pattern. So here is the counts if you were to follow it all the way up. So you have one row of this color, five, do you see this? And one and then seven, you got four, one, four and seven. And that's your repeat pattern it says to times that by three. So this is one repeat pattern of, of three. So just to recap, so you got one, five, one, seven, four, one, four and seven and then it continues to repeat. So what we have here is like the granite or the moss stitch and it's a really easy pattern. It's consisting of two different rows and then you can see that it really kind of works out really quite wonderful. So I'm gonna show you a very small sample on how to do the stitch and then I'm going to leave the color mixing for you to be able to do that sequence on your own and this pattern is available in one size fits all and all you just need to do is then just follow it up for a certain amount of uh, dimensions that I'm about to tell you about. So without further ado let me show 
show you how to do the stitch right off the bat and then we're going to then uh, carry up and I'm gonna show you on this sample how to go up over top of the shoulder in order to keep it in balance. So I'm gonna show you how to do the stitch. It's called the, gra uh, the granite or the moss stitch and we see this in color pooling too. So we're gonna create a slip knot. And it says to chain 126. So you're going to chain 126. I'm just showing you a smaller sample. So I'm going to only chain 12 just for demonstration. So you're gonna chain, so you're gonna chain 126. So this is 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. And you're gonna go to 126 for me. So when you're ready, we're gonna then go across the first row. To do that, we're gonna go second chain from the hook, so one and two, and I want you to single crochet into that one. And then I want you to chain one, skip the next chain, and single crochet into the next one. So chain one, skip the next chain, single crochet in the next. So chain one, skip one, single crochet into the next. And you keep doing that all the way across your chain. And finally, you'll end up in the last, sorry, um, got, did that, and you're gonna end up in the last chain. Nice and easy. So rows two and three are repeat pattern through this whole thing. Doesn't matter the color, it's always gonna be the same. So let's go for row number two. So whenever you have row number two, you're going to notice that there is a gap space right after the very first single crochet in the row below. So single crochet, chain one, single crochet. So whenever you're on row number two, you're going to chain up one and you're going to single crochet in the first single crochet. And to continue this pattern, you have to single crochet in the chain one space in whenever you're in row number two. And then you start the same pattern that you already see. So you're gonna chain one, skip one, and go to the next chain one space. And you do that all the way across, except for the very final. So chain one, go to the next chain one space and single crochet, chain one, single crochet in the next chain one space and you continue all the way across. So right now when you continue all the way across you end up in the last chain one space before the final stitch. So it's just like how you put one in the very first one and then there was one in the next one. You have to finish off that way too. So you already have a single crochet in the chain one space. So all you just need to do is single crochet one time. So you don't chain one or anything just go right into the end. So then to continue up in chain, in round number three, you are going to maintain the pattern. So chain one and single crochet in the first one. So you'll notice in the row below, there is a single crochet and then a chain one space. So this time in row number three, you are going to chain one and go right to the chain one space. So every other row in the row below that you see, there will be two single crochets in a row and whenever you're on row number three, there will be one single crochet followed by chain one and then one single crochet into the next space. So chain one and going into the next space, chain one and continuing along like that. So you just have to continue to uh, maintain that as you go all the way across. So here you can see two uh, single crochets in a row. So you skip the last uh, one here before the end and then you just go into the end one. Okay, so this is row number uh, three. So what you have to just do is that we're in the very first time we're going to turn our work and this will be the last time before it changes the first color and I'm gonna show you the tricks on changing color. So to start this one, we're back on row number two. We chain up one, we single into the first one and the chain one space is directly the next one. So we're just gonna fill it in with a single crochet, chain one and then go into each chain one space across except for the very final. We're going to have two single crochets in a row. So this is the end of row number four. just like you see here. And the last stitch is going to be one single crochet but I don't want you to finish it because we're about to change color. So I'm going to add in my purple next that we have and whenever you change color you do this. So just cut your yarn just a little bit extra long so you can hide it later. And take this one here and create a slip knot first and pull it through the very final when, it, when you do that. And now you're ready for row number five. So you're gonna turn your work and here's the trick. I want you, this straggler, 
of the gray and the straggler of the purple is what you need to watch for. So you're going to chain up one first and when you go into the first one I want you to scoop up those two straggler, straggler chains so it's sitting on top of the hook and then going into the stitch and that will bury it underneath so it's a single crochet. So we're gonna maintain the pattern as we know it so we're gonna chain up one and the next one is a single crochet so we're skipping over it and we're just gonna go into the next one. But because this has loose ends here I want to go right up over top of those so it gets stuck underneath the stitches. So then chain one and you wanna do that for about two inches into your project of hiding those underneath just like that. So once you get that buried in so then you just continue to go along all the way and in this one here we are gonna be finishing. We're only doing one time this color. So then you just go into the last one and you pull through and we're gonna then change it back to a different color. So I, it asks for you, me to do white but for tutorial reasons you will never see it. So I'm gonna change it to the tiger eye color and I'm gonna pull it through and then I'm going to trim off my other yarn like I had been already before. So these purple lines make a really cool look in the pattern. So turning it and we're gonna start with the tiger eye. So chain up one and then scoop underneath and pick up those stragglers and then going into the first stitch. And that'll trap it underneath. If you have to tighten anything now's the time to do it. So just kind of tighten up your strands. And then you maintain the pattern as you have. So I have a chain one space directly the next one. So this one is going to be a single. So there's two singles in a row, chain one and I continue across using the tiger's eye and keeping everything nice and, and snug. Just like that. So I already told you the sequence of events for the um, for the colors. So all you just need to do is just maintain this and what you have to do is that you have to maintain it for a certain distance in order to go all the way. So this would be how you change the colors and then when you're ready for these what you can just do is that if you bury them in long enough you can just safely trim out this yarn and hide them into position just like you see here and then you get all the way to the top. So let me uh, explain a little bit more for you. So in the pattern on page number two you will be working through the instructions of the color changes in order to do it. So you go all the way into row number 34 and then it says rows repeat five to 34 which is the stripe pattern which, which we're creating twice more. Okay so you have to do a total of three times and then repeat rows five and six one more time. So what we have here is that when you look at the pattern here from a distance then you're, you're going to repeat this purple all the way up until the gray and then this purple then when you go to restart it becomes the next repeat pattern. So you're going to see a total of this stripe a total of three times before it changes to go up over top of the body. So it starts here and goes all the way to the gray. Once you have that done three times then you are going to then repeat rows number five which you see here and then repeat rows number six and which is the first one of this color here and once we have that done then we're going to start working on the back of the neck and we're gonna shape it and then I'm gonna show you some tricks on being able to do that. So let's begin to do the back part. So once you get the repeat pattern done three times and you get five and six in one more time when we go to start the next row then which will be the next one we want to stop at a certain point. So it says repeat the pattern for 52 stitches and then single crochet the next two together. So instead of thinking about and having to count all the way across uh, as you go I would do it in advance. Grab two stitch markers or just spare yarn and let's count. So you're gonna go so what I would do is two, four, six these represent stitches so it's either one, two, three, four or you can just look at where these are and just times it by two. So two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-four, twenty-six, twenty-eight, thirty, thirty-two, thirty-four, thirty-six, thirty-eight, forty, forty-two, forty-four, forty-six, forty-eight, fifty and fifty-two just like you see here. So the fifty-two includes this chain one space. So it says then to do that and going all the way across. So do that and then mark it with a stitch marker. This is not exactly where you're gonna finish but it says to repeat the pattern for 52 stitches. 
just like you see here. And then the next two are gonna become two together. So you're going to repeat exactly what you know in this pattern but up into this and then the next two stitches you're gonna put those two together which will be the single crochet and the chain one space. But let's uh, uh, bring this back now and let's take a look at it. So we're gonna put this back onto the hook and that's exactly where we're gonna end up. So we just maintain the pattern as you know. So chain one, single crochet in the first and then single crochet in the next one and then chain one and then go into the spaces. So let me get to where I've marked it with the stitch marker and let me show you exactly how to put the two stitches together. So I'm just maintaining the pattern as I know it and right where I put the stitch marker was the 52 there. So I put in a single crochet and now I'm going to put the next stitches together and I'm going to put the next chain one space together. So just going right into the stitch, pull through and then go into the chain one space and pull through you end up having three loops on the hook and pull through all three. So now when you go to turn this around, what you're just going to do is maintain the pattern to what you already know it to be. So you're going to chain one and you just look at the stitch of what you just finished and so you can see you're going to single crochet in the first one and the next one there's a chain one space so you're gonna have to fill that in with a single crochet, chain one and then and keep on jumping just like that and you wanna do that as you go all the way across. And that's how you establish then the right side of the project and now all you're just going to do then for the remaining is to repeat the counts of what you already know. So I already gave you the counts here so there's gonna be, remember if you remember, it's gonna be five of these of this color and then it goes just like you see it here. So you got five and then one and then you got seven, four, one, four, seven, one and so this ends up being repeating as you're going all back all the way across. So all you're just gonna do then is that you keep doing this until how many inches do you get? And I will be right back in just a moment because I just don't remember what that is. So I'll, I'll be back in just a moment. So this is the right side and what you're going to do is continue to repeat the pattern until you can fold this uh, uh, this piece up over in half and it matches the other length. So whatever the length is for the, the three repeat patterns, this length here should match that same length. So you have to literally fold it over and then you stop exactly where um, it matches on the other side. So it's actually really quite an easy thing to, to be able to manage. Now you'll notice in the pattern it had a black border and we're gonna get to that in a bit but I want to make sure that we start off and get you the other side of this started. So right over here we need to go down the other side to go up over top of the other side of your shoulder. So let's uh, maintain to do that in just a moment. So let's review on how to do the left side. So let's pretend that the right side is done. So right where we are the last stitch is in and it says you need to skip over a total of 17 stitches so that includes the first chain one. So you can go uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16 and 17 is the, the next one right there. I'm gonna verify that so it's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16 and 17, uh, 17 is that one right there. So now that's where we're going to join the next one. So we have to maintain exactly what we have on the other side and if you remember there was two single crochets two together here as we started. So when we go to join this one we're gonna chain up one but we're going to join this first one that you're in and then that first chain one space together right off the bat to maintain the look of the other side. So your neck is gonna fit right into the spot. So now you're just gonna maintain the pattern as you know it. So chain one and then just hiding in your loose end right into the stitch work right underneath the stitches you will never see it and if you want to use a darning needle you can do so. So now you just have to go back and forth exactly matching the pattern like it was before. Uh, look at the sequence now that you will have one side done which is not here right now but once you have one side done you can actually um, just kind of look at it and cross compare and you go back and forth. So what's gonna happen is that you're gonna take your project then and fold it right in half right where it is and this side should match the length of the other side and uh, when you look at the sequence of colors that will probably help you out as well in order to get that perfect match on the other side. So you're just gonna keep on getting that done and then we have a border to worry about and then once we get the border done then we can um, think about doing all the embroidery work in order to have the lines going down throughout the project. So let's review on how to do the border. So the border is made up of four different rounds. So what we're going to do is that we're gonna start off in the bottom corner of 
the ruana and we're gonna go along the bottom edge. So just join it right into a corner and what we want to do is that we want to make sure that there's gonna be three single crochets in every corner that we hit as we go all the way around. So chain up one, so join it, chain up one and do three single crochets right into the corner. So one, two and three and you wanna equally space these across. So just going into the next chain one space and then single crochet into the next single crochet and go into the chain one space and so on. So you just wanna be kinda of loose with it. Just be relaxed and work your way all the way across and when you hit a corner all you're just gonna do is that you're going to put in three single crochets in order to do that. So what's gonna happen is that when you get all the way around you're eventually gonna hit the shoulder area where the turn is in the other direction. So it's gonna come down and then needing to turn. Let's explain how that's gonna happen. So what's gonna happen is that eventually you're gonna have a panel coming out here and you're gonna be crocheting down. So everything is pretty much a, a right handed turn depending if you're left or right handed of course and you're gonna come down and then eventually you have to go this way. So normally in the corners we would have put in three single crochets but in this case because it's coming down in this way you're just gonna single crochet all the way down and then just turn and to continue to single crochet, turn and single crochet. So you don't add in any extra here when it comes into a corner like this. And so your neck is gonna be wrapped around this section here at the back. So you want to maintain that as you're going all the way around. Let me explain how to do a rows no, rounds number two and three. So rounds two and three you're just gonna maintain one single crochet into each of the single crochets and in the right handed turns or in the when it turns the middle one is gonna get three single crochets right into it. Same rule when it comes down to the middle section here as it comes around just stop and then just uh, crochet and jump over and then stop and jump over. So don't add anything extra here in the corners. So you're gonna do a, a total of three rounds like this and then the final round is what is called as a reverse single crochet. To do a reverse let me just zoom in right here and I'll show you a reverse. So the final round is that you're gonna go in the opposite direction than what you're used to. So you chain one and go into the same stitch, pull through and through and you're thinking well that wasn't a, uh, a reverse single crochet. Watch, you're gonna go into the one right before it now and pull through and through and the one before that through and through and you just keep on going backward. Okay, so you're not moving forward, you're going backward and it's gonna create this most beautiful textured edge by doing a reverse single crochet. And you do that all the way around. Now the nice thing about the reverse single crochet, don't add in anything extras to any corners, just continue to maintain it what you see and just it'll follow around and have the most nicest turns uh, when you're wearing it and you can see that within the model. So it'll nicely turn and then go down the edges that are already gonna be existing. So this is a reverse single crochet. So we have one more thing to do. We have the lines that go down through the front of it. Let's uh, talk about that. Now the only thing that's gonna be missing at this point, you'll have the borders done and now you are missing the lines that go up and that is done afterward. It's called chain embroidery and we do it after. So it says to place stitch markers on the 11, 21, tw uh, 31st and 41st stitches across the back um, stripe. Okay, so what you have to just do is maintain it. So what you can do here is that you look down on it and then you count it. So go two, four, six, eight, ten, and it said the eleventh. So the eleventh is gonna be right here and so we're just going to put a stitch marker there. Just as to let us know where it is and then you can continue then across and put in more stitch markers. So then it said to put in in the next 21st. So if that's the 11th you have a total of uh, two. So this is if that's 11 so 12 and this is gonna be 14, 16, 18, 20 and then this will be 21. And you keep doing that and making all your measurements across. So then the next one is at 31, the next one's at 41 and so on. And you're gonna do that so that you have these beautiful lines going all the way across and they will be in the up motion as you can see. So let's uh, take a look back at the photo and let me just uh, maintain that. So what's gonna happen is that these are pretty much basically adding every 10 um, stitches you're gonna have this line going up in the, in the horizontal or in the vertical direction. But how do you exactly apply that? Let's take a look at that. 
Now the horizontal line is gonna be the same color as the border and so right where I marked it is exactly where I want to think about. So I'm going to create a slip knot with extra long strands so I can bury in the edges later and I'm going to start on the bottom section and there will be a border here but I'm gonna start on the gray and I'm going to join it around. So just go around the chain itself and just slip stitch to attach. So all I just need to do is slip stitch my way all the way to the top. So following that same one as you can see. So sometimes there's a single crochet, sometimes there's a space and I wanna follow it up all the way. So just wrap the yarn and pull through and through and be firm about it but don't be too tight about it either because then it will ruin the look. And you want to maintain it so that it sits on top of each other as you're working on it. So it'll take a little bit of practice for you to get used to that and it's just called the uh, sli uh, a slip stitch kind of a chain. So you're just gonna pull up and up and you are maintaining a line going all the way in the vertical direction. So each one of the verticals that you do that with is gonna need this to be done. So it's a nice way of putting this in without actually having you to jump through hoops in order to do it in the very beginning. And now that I'm getting more and more used to it, it's getting really easy. So what I want to do is that even from my a viewpoint, I stayed in a vertical line just like this and I wanna follow it up right to the other side and then I wanna fasten off, leave an extra long tail, weave in your ends and then come back and do the next line and these will be your crossing points in order to maintain this pattern all the way up. So the whole idea is if you're too tight with this, your project won't relax when you go to wear it. So sometimes you just need to clean it up just like so and etc. So that would be how you do your vertical line and then you can see it matches exactly what you see within the pattern and it's really quite awesome at the same time. So this is how you do the Rowana. Everything from the repeat pattern to the going up over top of the shoulders to applying your border and then applying the final embroidery that you see in order to maintain it. So until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. We'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.